In our last video, I introduced foodborne illness and kind of the general idea behind it. Um, we talked a little bit about how many people get sick from each type of thing um, that could potentially cause you to get a foodborne illness. And today what we're going to do is we're going to kind of dive into the details a little bit about some more of the specific things that could get you sick. And today we're going to be talking about viruses and parasites. So buckle up, people. Here we go. So viruses and parasites are, like we said, kind of one of, parasites especially are a pretty small care, uh, category of things that get you sick. Viruses probably are the biggest category of things that cause foodborne illnesses, but in terms of deaths, they're, they're pretty small. So bacteria kind of get their own whole discussion, which will be happening um, later on this week. But we're going to be talking about viruses first, and then we'll get to parasites. So the big question is, what are viruses? You have probably heard a lot about viruses. You've heard about the cold. You've heard of COVID-19, of course, the flu, and all of those things are viruses. And so I think a lot of times that we um, use the word, we hear going viral, but what we don't really do is take a look and actually know what a virus is. So what viruses are, are strands of DNA, which is genetic material, or RNA that are coded in a protein. Now, in the background here on this slide presentation, you will see a type of virus. Um, it's just a picture of or an artist's rendering of what a virus looks like. So this is just an example. There are kind of these, there's a couple different types of viruses, and this is one type of them. But in general, viruses work by having genetic material coated in protein, and sometimes they're coated in a little bit of fat. And then what ends up happening is that the viruses actually need to go into a body or a host cell to continue living. Um, so viruses, there is kind of a lot of debate depending on who you're talking to, which scientists you're talking to, there's debate about whether viruses are actually even alive or not in the first place. And the reason why is because viruses cannot replicate or reproduce without a host cell to live in. So they need an environment to live in that is based on a host. And so they can't live on their own. So oftentimes they consider them not really alive in the first place, but some people do. Like I said, there's kind of a big nerd debate that happens about it. And so the way that viruses work is that they use the host cell to make a copy of itself. And then a lot of times those viruses, when they make the copy of itself, actually kill the host cell in the process. So it's not you know, very good. And the one thing you need to know about a virus that is different than um, something that you get sick with bacteria is that you cannot treat a virus with antibiotics. Anti means against, bio means life. So if we're talking about an antibiotic, an antibiotic is designed to kill an infection that's caused by a bacteria. Oftentimes with viruses, what ends up happening is that if you're sick with those symptoms, you just kind of have to ride them out. So especially with a foodborne illness, you have to ride it out and um, go through the symptoms and then just kind of hope that you get better. There are things that you can take to treat the symptoms oftentimes, and there are vaccines that can help you prevent getting sick with the virus, but usually once you get the virus, you just kind of have to let it ride out your system um, and then hope that your body can fight it off, which is kind of a bummer. What we're going to be doing for the next two um, the next two presentations is that we're going to be talking about some specific characteristics of different viruses that can cause foodborne illness, different parasites, and different bacteria. So for the viruses and parasites, what I would recommend is maybe pausing this video and then stopping and making a table that is laid out kind of like this. And then as I go through the information, you can fill it out for each of them. So at the top of your table, I would put the pathogen. And again, the pathogen is the thing that's going to make you sick. How many people get sick? What usually gets you sick? how long it takes you to get sick after you get infected. They call it an incubation period, the symptoms you have, and then how long you are sick for. What's going to happen eventually is that I'm going to give you some scenarios and say, hey, this person has these symptoms and they ate these things. What do you think caused them to get sick? And so having them kind of at a table, easy to access, will be helpful. Okay, so if you need to pause your video to get the table ready to go, that's great. Otherwise, we're going to kind of keep on rolling with your notes. I do expect you to write these notes down at some point in time, so um, make sure that you're doing that, okay? 
All right, so our first virus that we're gonna be talking about is the norovirus. This is a picture of um, what the norovirus looks like. It's kind of a little ball. It doesn't have the same spiky things as the virus in our background here. Um, but norovirus, I would say, is probably your classic quote unquote stomach flu. As we talked about in the last presentation, there is no such thing as the stomach flu, but if you get sick really bad, for a short period of time, there's a good chance that you caught the norovirus. The norovirus is probably the most, um, I guess, consistent thing as far as getting people sick, and it gets the most people sick every year. It gets 20 million people on average sick every year, which is a lot of people. It is extremely contagious. So it takes very few virus particles. I believe when I was doing my research, they said it takes as few as 20 particles of virus to get into your body to start getting you sick. So it takes very, very few particles and your body, when it gets sick, produces tons of particles of virus or tons of copies of the virus when you get sick. And so it's really easy to pass things on. Um, you can get sick with your norovirus. You're gonna hear my dog barking in the background. You're just gonna have to deal with it. Um, you can get sick from having direct contact with an infected person. It doesn't even have to be like, oh, we like touched hands. It could be a surface that they got sick around and that would be enough. When a person is sick with a norovirus, if they have diarrhea, they can shed up to 5 billion virus copies in every gram of poop that they make, which is insane. When you think about how sick you are, they're just shedding billions and billions of viruses. So it takes very little for it to happen. You could also consume contaminated food or water, and then that could potentially get you sick. Norovirus is one of the things that you can oftentimes see people on cruise ships where they're like, oh, an entire cruise full of people got sick. That is most likely caused by the norovirus because what happens a lot of times is that you touch a contaminated surface and then you put your unwashed hands in your mouth kind of unwittingly and then you get sick. So imagine that somebody's sick in their little cruise cabin and then they don't wash their hands well enough because there's 5 billion viruses out you know, for every gram of poop. So if they don't wash their hands very very well, then they hold the railing as they're going somewhere, they touch an elevator button, and then the next thing you know, you touch it and you're not thinking about it and you eat something. So it's one of those things where if you touch a contaminated surface, it takes so few virus actual particles to get you sick that you can get sick pretty easily from it. So it's pretty crazy how fast it can go. Really will ruin your vacation if you get sick with that. Now, after you get the virus into your body. It usually takes you 24 to 48 hours after your exposure until you start to have symptoms. And then the fun begins. Symptoms include diarrhea. A lot of times it's pretty watery. So you go to the bathroom and then it gets watery. Vomiting. So you have it coming out of both ends. Nausea. Your stomach hurts. You have stomach pain. Once in a while, you'll get a low fever, but it's generally pretty low grade, which means that it's, you know, 100, 101. You don't have a super high fever and you usually get better in one to two days. So if you are sick for just 24 hours, you are generally probably got either you could have had one type of food poisoning, but generally it's usually the norovirus. So it can be uh, it can be kind of a rough 24 hours, but usually you get through it. The biggest thing is if you are sick for longer than one to two days, you can run into dehydration because of all the vomiting and the diarrhea. Like I said, all of these things, kind of their whole purpose is to replicate and spread. So when they get you sick, they want to get you messy sick so that you can spread all of your stuff all over the place and then they can keep living on a new host after your body um, gets sick. One really interesting thing I read about norovirus, they're saying some of the re research indicates that once the norovirus infects you, it actually slows down the digestion in your stomach. And then when the digestion slows down, it means that it keeps more food in there. So when it finally gets you sick, you have more stuff to get sick and then you get sick all over the place because that virus is a jerk. So this is kind of gross. All right. 
The other virus that you sometimes see with foodborne issues is hepatitis A. Now, this is a little bit different because it's not a virus in the same way where you're going to be throwing up or you are going to be getting diarrhea. It is actually a liver infection, so it's a little bit different. Um, <clears throat> it is still very contagious, though, and it causes over 20,000 illnesses a year. You can get sick from consuming food that's been contaminated by a sick person. So usually it comes from a person, and then what happens is they spread it whether they harvest your vegetables, whether they're the farmer who's growing it, whether they're the person who works in a processing plant, or they are the person who's preparing your food. Hepatitis A happens a lot of times from people who work in restaurants that pass it on to people who are eating um, uncooked things. Because it's a liver infection, it's a little bit different. It takes two to seven weeks before your symptoms start. So you are not going to notice that you get sick until quite a while after you get initially infected. Your symptoms include, and again, we're not talking about like the same traditional ones, are yellow skin or eyes. Whenever you have a liver infection, you can have that yellowing of your eyes and your skin, and that's called jaundice. Um, sometimes babies are born with that, and then they have to be wrapped in something called a billy blanket. You may have heard of that before. Not wanting to eat. Upset stomach. Sometimes you can have throwing up. Stomach pain. Fever. And then dark colored urine or light colored stools. And that's because your liver is not doing what it's supposed to. And you can get kind of all screwed up because of that. You can also have diarrhea and joint pain and general being tired, feeling tired. It's not a good time. Hepatitis A usually resolves on its own, but it can last up to two months or longer depending on what's going on. So it can be a pretty uncomfortable stretch of time. Like I said, there are drugs that they can give you that will help kind of treat some of the symptoms, but it won't, the, the infection kind of just needs to cure up on its own. And so it takes a long time. Okay, moving on, our good friends, the parasites. So parasites, I find actually a little bit creepier because a virus isn't dead, but a parasite is alive. And the parasite is alive inside you and it's kind of gross. So what a parasite is, is an organism that lives in or on a host organism and gets its food either from the host or through the host. So it either like leaches nutrients off of you or um, it's like rot, like you've maybe seen like sharks and then they have fish that swim underneath them. Those are parasitic fish and then they kind of leech off of the sharks. So it's, it's kind of like that. So basically they just piggyback off of you to keep them alive. Like ticks and fleas are also parasites, but we're talking about the ones that you eat. Usually because they have to live off of the host, they don't kill the host, but they can make the host very, very sick. And they usually most of the time live in their host for an extended period of time because once they set up shop and things are going well, they're like, well, I'm going to sit back and relax for a little while. So it's kind of a long-term thing that happens a lot of times with parasites. And with most parasites, you don't know you're sick for a while. So it takes a little bit for that to kick into gear. The first parasite that we're going to talk about is something called Giardia. This little cutie over here is the Giardia parasite. Um, and the we'll get into it in just a second. But the Giardia parasite has these little things around that swim on them, and they're just kind of nasty little buggers. So Giardia causes around 20 million people to get sick every year from it. It's a lot of people that get sick from it. And with Giardia you can get sick from drinking contaminated water. And I would say that this is probably the most common thing. You see it a lot in people who go camping. So when you go camping, you should not drink water straight from a stream because animals have pooped in it and there's bacteria growing in it and these little guys. So what happens a lot of times is if people are thirsty and they're camping, they'll like fill up their bottles with the, the water and then you get Giardia, which is not a good time. You can also get Giardia from eating raw food wash, washed in contaminated water. So if you take your food and then you prepare it and wash it in like um, stream water or even untreated water, you can get Giardia as well, which is not a good time. Or eating food contaminated by a preparer. So like I said, with parasites, it takes a little bit longer. Norovirus, you're sick really fast. With Giardia, it takes one to three weeks after exposure before the little parasite um, actually starts to make you sick. 
Now, the reason why it takes a little while for it to make you sick is because you actually have to consume what's called a cyst. So what happens is something else that's sick passes those cysts on usually through poop and a lot of times there's giardia and then it's passed on through like a deer or a bear that's pooping in a stream and so then they pass on these little cysts which are kind of these microscopic hard shelled egg type things and then those cysts dissolve and then release these guys into your system and so it takes a little while for that process to happen the same thing happens with tapeworms which is what we'll talk about next so the symptoms for giardia include um, watery and sometimes really foul smelling diarrhea that alternates with soft greasy stools. So if you see like a lot of weird like fatty stuff when you're going to the bathroom and things smell really really bad and you're sick you may have gotten giardia. Okay fatigue so that means you're really tired, abdominal cramps and bloating, you're a little gassy you know sounds like you're gonna be a real treat to be around here, you're nauseous and you lost weight you might have giardia. So with Giardia, most people just kind of let it ride and they work itself out over time. But you are miserable for two to six weeks. So think about that. That's between half a month and a month and a half that you could potentially be sick for. So if you go camping and you need to drink water from a lake or a stream, you either need to run it through a filter that can take out the Giardia or you can treat it with like iodine tablets that they have for camping and that can generally kill most of those things. Or you can actually boil your water and if you boil your water that will also kill these things as well um, but you just have to be careful because it uh, can get you very sick don't drink out of that stream it looks clean but it's probably not the last parasite that we're going to talk about is something called the tapeworm I have personal experience with this because my dog ate a dead fish on the beach and she got a tapeworm and it was nasty well, just nasty. So tapeworms are rare in people, but they are pretty common in animals. And it happens a lot of times from eating things, which we'll talk about in just a minute. But even the, even so, it causes around about a thousand people to get sick every year. So it's not super popular in people, but you may have heard of it with like a dog, like I said. Um, you can get sick from eating raw beef or pork. That's how people typically get sick. My dog ate a dead raw fish and then that is what led us to that problem. It works off the same idea where you have the cysts and then the cysts dissolve and then they turn into the little worm. What happens with the tapeworm is that it takes a while for you to get sick um, and actually develop symptoms that you would notice. Tapeworms are kind of little segmented worms, which means that they grow longer and longer. Um, and the like, People have had like 10 or 20 foot tapeworms in their body that have lived for a really, really long time and they did not know that they were sick. Symptoms for a tapeworm include abdominal pain, so you have stomach pains, you're not hungry, you're losing weight but you're not trying to lose weight, um, you have an upset stomach. And this is probably the biggest thing that lets people know that they have tapeworm because these three things here could also be symptoms of you know, digestion issues, you could have irritable bowel syndrome, you could have cancer even. But the big thing that lets people know that they actually have this parasite is that you pass tapeworm segments in your poop. So what happens is you go to the bathroom and there's these like weird dead, like chunky parts that come out in your poop as well and it's super nasty. With a tapeworm, it will live unless you take medication. So it can live for years in people without taking medication. So you have to take basically a poison that kills the tapeworm and then the tapeworm dies. And then the grossest part is that you have to pass it through your digestive system. So then what happens is if your body doesn't absorb it, the worm comes out and it's gross, 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 gross. So really, really, really don't wanna have a tapeworm. But like I said, most people don't get them. You see it in animals and it is pretty nasty. So those are our most common viruses and parasites and we are gonna be getting into bacteria next. Hopefully you're not too grossed out because things are gonna be picking up once we get talking about bacteria. All right, prepare yourselves.